Whether you're a beginner or you've been recording for a while, one of the most important things you can learn how to do is to properly set the levels for your recording. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some different scenarios, whether that's using the Shure SM7B or an SM57 on a guitar amp or even directly recording into your interface. I'm gonna go through each of the situations that may be familiar to you, and I'm gonna give you practical advice, a specific number and a range that I want you to shoot for every time you go to record. My name is Chris Green. My whole channel is for musicians and people that are into music production. I wanna encourage you to hit the subscribe button for more tutorials and tip videos just like this. And if you're already subscribed, please hit the like button because that helps push this thing out to even more people. With all that being said, today's video is gonna be very much a live sense about it. I'll try not to do a lot of editing, but let's jump into our first case scenario, the Shure SM7B. So this is a large diaphragm dynamic microphone. And one of the things that people notice as soon as you get one is that it requires a lot of juice or by juice, I'm gonna say gain. Right now, I've got a situation where I just have the microphone cable plugged into the SM7B and then I'm plugged into channel two of my audio interface. It really doesn't matter what audio interface you're using, each interface is gonna have its own way of setting gain or setting up a gain structure. Today I'm using my RME Babyface Pro. It is a two channel USB audio interface that's plugged into my MacBook. RME uses a software called Total Mix FX. Not all audio interfaces use a software for you to control the preamps. If you've got a Focusrite Scarlett, they just have physical knobs on it for you to adjust the gain. That's gonna be totally fine as well. But if you do have some sort of software that you have to use to control the preamps, make sure you have that all figured out. Universal Audio uses one, I believe it's called Console. Whenever you open up Console, you wanna make sure you're checking your gain structure from the source all the way through to the DAW. I'm using Studio One, and even though Studio One has some built-in metering, always start with the source and make sure you're not clipping, okay? Clipping is where we're hitting that red block that no one wants to see. You may think of clipping as some sort of compression or some sort of limiting. I'll just tell you that clipping is very bad. It's not pleasing to listen to. Now there are plugins that kind of emulate some soft clipping or they try to use clipping in a way to make stuff louder. I'll just tell you that in 2023, we don't need to be recording signals that are so loud that they clip. We've got plenty of headroom in most of our audio interfaces and you can also make compensations for this later on in your Studio One or whatever DAW you're using, okay? On Studio One, just to show you this here, Make sure you have the mix tab open and then this button over here with the arrow and the vertical line, this is our input monitoring, okay? So whenever you're setting levels, it's just good to know, make sure you have the mix tab open, make sure you go over to the left side and enable input monitoring. You should be able to see each of your channels kind of splayed out on the screen. You can extend this out. If you don't see enough of the channels, go up to song, song setup, and then you should be able to see your inputs and outputs. You can go through the grid, make sure all your inputs are showing up there as well. Today's video, I'm only concerned mainly with inputs one and two, and then we'll do some direct recording as I mentioned. The first case scenario I'm gonna talk about is someone that's using the Shure SM7B either for YouTube, for a podcast, or doing something where you're speaking. Much like I'm doing right now on the camera, if I wanna use the Shure SM7, instead of this lapel mic that's around my shirt collar. If I wanna use the SM7 for speaking like this, I just need to make sure I've got the microphone in an appropriate position where it's pointed at my mouth and then I need to go to the gain knob. So now I'm gonna switch over to the SM7 audio. You're gonna hear it get louder and louder and let's see what happens to the metering. Testing one, two, testing one, two. So I'm bringing up the fader. Excuse me, not the fader, gain, testing, test one, two, gain, test, test, test. What I'm aiming for is on Studio One, they have a great metering system because it shows you your peak level. So the blue bar, you see the blue bar moving very quickly, and then you see this white horizontal bar that seems to be moving a lot slower, okay? The white horizontal line is basically giving me an average loudness of what's coming out, okay? The blue bar, as it fluctuates a lot quicker as I speak 
One, two, three. The blue bar is showing me a peak value, okay? The peaks are what you need to be most careful of because that's the loudest thing that's being picked up by the microphone. So when I'm speaking to this microphone, as you can see, my peaks are happening around negative 12. And then the average or that white horizontal line is hovering around negative 24. Nine times out of 10, this is what I'm going for whenever I'm recording audio levels, okay? On RME Total Mix, you can see a green bar that looks much less satisfying, okay? Visually, if I'm looking at Total Mix, I really wanna see that green bar fill up all the way. Don't we all feel this way most of the time, okay? We wanna record levels as hot as possible. The danger of this, as you can see on PreSonus Studio One, is I get way too close to clipping. So if I go back to the gain knob on Total Mix, if I crank this up even higher, test one, two, test one, two, now I'm clipping on PreSonus Studio One, so you can see the red bar has popped up. I'm clipping on PreSonus Studio One, and I'm also clipping on Total Mix. You can see this little red button right here. The red is not good. Red is dead, okay? Make sure you're not clipping. This is way too loud, and if I switch over to the SM7B's audio, you can hear my voice sounds extremely distorted because it's chopping off all of those transients. Like I said, not in a pleasing way, it's doing it very aggressively. Also, the thing you need to know is that whenever the gain knob is this high, you're gonna be introducing what's called preamp noise, okay? There's a lot of noise happening in this preamp because virtually every preamp is designed to operate lower than it's 100%. If you've got your preamp gain turned up to 100%, you're gonna hear a lot of hissing, you're gonna hear a lot of excessive noise. So let's take a listen to that. So even without me speaking, let's go ahead and turn down the gain now. Let's go back to where we were testing. One, two, testing, test, test, test. So again, now I'm back at negative 12 with my peaking and my average volume is still hovering around negative 24. Whenever I go to gain stage, whenever I'm mixing, I really wanna hit negative 18. Negative 18 used to be kind of the ideal sweet spot when people were using things like tape machines or things that were a lot more sensitive to noise. They wanted to hit what was called negative 18. They gave you plenty of headroom so that as you mix, you can always bring it up louder, okay? But if something is clipping, Whenever something is clipping, just know that you can't get rid of the clipped signal. If you turn down the gain after the fact, like you've already recorded something and it clipped, you think, okay, I'm just gonna turn it down so I get rid of that clipping. Well, unless you're using floating processing, okay, where you have like a 32-bit float on Studio One, that clip signal is glued into your recording. It's not great, okay? So don't rely on the software. Just look, and if you see something that's red, you either need to redo what you just have done or you need to lower your recorded levels. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the SM7 has some issues because the RME interface has a lot of gain to it, but I also feel uncomfortable whenever I see the gain level this high. To me, the sweet spot for a gain, a gain knob that's at like 20 to 30%, on the software or on your interface, that feels good because that was that makes me feel like I've got more gain that I can work with. The Sure SM7B, it requires a lot of juice. We have a way of fixing this by the cloud lifter, okay? So the cloud lifter, this little box you can get, it basically is gonna give you 10 decibels of extra added gain to your preamp. The way I'm gonna get this to work is I've gotta insert a microphone cable in between the SM7B and my interface. So right now the SM7B is plugged into channel two. I'm gonna unplug it. I'm gonna plug the SM7 into this box for the cloud lifter. The other end of the cloud lifter is gonna go right back into channel two. And then one thing that you have to do with the cloud lifter, it requires phantom power. Or if you have a 48 volt switch on your interface, sometimes this is on the front of the Scarlett, you can use the 48 volt phantom switch there. Or on your software, you see a button on RME Title 48V. Now, 
I've left the gain level where it was previously, but now as you can see, we've got way too much signal. So I need to turn the gain down. Testing one, two, testing, test one, two. Hey, test, 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 test one, two. So now my gain knob is right around that 30 to 40% region and I don't have to turn up the preamp as much and I'm not clipping, okay? To clear the clip signal, just click these red boxes. And now if I'm speaking into the microphone, I'm getting a healthy signal. I could probably even turn it up just a little bit more, but this is how it's set up for speaking or doing some sort of podcast with the Shure SM7B. Now I wanna show you something just to emphasize how the gain, there's no magic number for setting the gain, okay? You wanna aim for what your metering is giving you around like negative 24 to negative 12, okay? Negative 18 is the sweet spot. Nothing is ever gonna stay at negative 18 unless it's just some sort of sine wave, okay? But let's say that instead of me speaking, let's say I start whispering into this microphone. Let's watch what happens to the meters, okay? So I'm talking on this podcast and let's just say I just start whispering. Now, if I'm whispering like this, notice how the metering has gone so far down. So if my podcast is going to be this kind of volume, I need to have more gain on the interface. So I'm going to turn the gain up. Test one, two, testing, test one, two. So now I'm hitting my peak value around negative 12 and then my average value is at negative 24 which this would be acceptable if I'm whispering into the microphone but as soon as I go to speak normal if I speak at a normal volume now all of a sudden I'm clipping okay so whispering is just fine but then if I go to speak now I'm clipping test one two test one two now why did I do that I did that to show that the source matters if you're recording somebody whispering into your Shure SM7B, you will definitely need some sort of cloud lifter, something to give you some extra gain, but you'll also need to communicate to whoever is speaking. They need to know that if you're gonna go from whispering to speaking loudly, you either need to use some sort of compressor or you need to adjust the gain as it's going. So if someone's gonna start doing a whisper, like telling ghost stories or something like that, you can adjust the gain for that section, turn it up, but then if they go to speaking at a normal volume, you need to be ready to turn the gain knob down. That's why there's never like a magic number. I can't tell you set your gain knob at 20 and you'll be hitting negative 18. I can't say that because every source is gonna be different. If you're speaking and you happen to have the exact setup that I'm on right now, you can set your RME interface to have 17 gain, okay? the number of gain on your interface is really just arbitrary. It doesn't really matter because what matters is what are you actually recording? If I put a trumpet in front of this microphone, it is going to be clipping if I set the gain level where it is, okay? But enough about the Shure SM7, let's get into some instruments, okay? What if you wanna record your acoustic guitar? Now, most of the time with an acoustic guitar, I would be recording it with like a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone is gonna need 48 volt phantom power and it's gonna be more sensitive than the Shure SM7. I'll tell you though, I actually use the SM7 a lot for recording acoustic guitar. I think it's got a great sound to it, sounds very natural, but it also kind of tames a lot of what you might have acoustic problems in your room. So I've taken the SM7 that was set up for my vocal now I've got it pointed down at my acoustic guitar. Let's keep everything at the same volume and let's just see what's happening to the metering on the interface. Okay, that's actually pretty good. I could actually turn the gain knob up. So instead of at 17, we're at 22 now. Let's take a look at the meter. All right, I'm gonna record a little bit of this microphone. I'm gonna call this acoustic. And we're going into channel two. 
I don't have any headphones on because one of the things I want to say is when you're setting gain levels, you really don't need to be listening as much as you are watching. This is the time when it's okay to be looking at meters, okay? I can't listen to something and tell you how loud it is. I can look at a meter and tell you, okay, that thing's about negative 18 or hey, that thing just clipped, okay? But let's record a little bit of acoustic guitar and I'll show you how you can manipulate it after the fact. Okay, so here I have my acoustic guitar. As you see, the levels are where they're at. One of the things that you can do early on, I wouldn't recommend you do this with all of your tracks, but you can use a function that's called normalize audio. Normalize audio will basically take the loudest part of whatever recording you just did, and it will bring it up to right below clipping, okay? So right click anywhere on the audio, and then you have command N, shortcut for normalize. All right, so in a similar situation, if I'm recording acoustic guitar, and let's say I have a picking pattern, okay? If I'm picking with my fingers instead of using a pick, well, what is that gonna do to the sound of the guitar? As you can see, now we're not hitting anywhere near that negative 12 to negative 24. So what I will do is, if this is a picking section, I'm gonna turn the gain knob up, now let's see what it does. Pretty good. If I go back to a pick now. All right, I couldn't. <laughs> So that's actually a really good volume. It's way too close to clipping. Though I didn't see the red light come on for clipping, it's way too loud for if I'm strumming, okay? Again, you wanna make sure you stay under negative 12 and above negative 24 as much as possible, okay? This, isn't mean, this doesn't mean that that's the best sound you can possibly get. It's gonna depend on the source of what you're recording. But just know that when you go to mix, if you're giving yourself 12 decibels of headroom, you can always add volume to it, mix your signal as you're going, but you need at least negative 24 and you need to have somewhat around negative 12 for those peaks. I've got an SP57 in front of my guitar amp. I'm gonna turn on the guitar amp. I'm gonna do something that you're not supposed to do. I'm gonna plug in my acoustic guitar and let's see what happens. Okay, so I don't have any pedals engaged. I just have my acoustic guitar plugged into this Fender Bassman, and I've got the SM57 sitting in front of the guitar amp. Now, what's different about the SM57 than the SM7? The SM57 should not require as much gain as the SM7 does. So let's go to channel one, and let's start bringing up the gain. Let's see what we can get. All right, and turn that gain up some more. So I've got a healthy level going into the SM57. I have no idea what the SM57 sounds like. I'd have to put on headphones and kind of maneuver things around. But today's video, it's about level more than it is quality of audio. What I want to show you is whenever you're using an amp, whenever you're using pedals, there's going to be a high, high probability that you're going to have issues with your gain structure. Because if I kick on an overdrive pedal, or if I turn up my amp, I'm not only affecting what's coming out of the amp, I'm also affecting my gain structure of what the microphone is picking up. So right now, my amp the volume knob is at four, four out of 10. I've got treble, high mid, low mid, and bass all around five. And I've got my master volume 
at five as well. Well, let's say I take that master volume and I turn it up to seven, okay? So now I've gone from four to seven on the master volume. Let's see what happens to my signal. sound fine in the room, but on the recording, I've now clipped, okay? Same principles are gonna apply whether using the SM57, whether you're plugging straight into the interface at all, okay? Direct recording, using SM7, using condenser microphone, all these concepts need to be the same. Get it right at the source. If you're whispering and if you're picking, you might need higher levels of gain. Not to say that you need higher levels of gain just because you're picking or whatever, but because you want to be able to hit that range of negative 24 to negative 12 on Studio One. Last thing I want to mention is that if you are using headphones, be careful that you're not basing your judgments on how loud something is based off of what you're hearing in the headphones, okay? You need to make use of the metering. You can be listening to something in your headphones and it sound really loud, and then you go to listen back to your recording and it sounds really quiet. Well, the reason is because if you are boosting the level of your headphones, if your headphone amp is cranked all the way, you're gonna be hearing a signal a lot louder than it actually is. So be careful whenever you're using headphones. Don't judge your audio quality or volume based off of the headphones, okay? There's so many pieces to the puzzle. I have my acoustic guitar that has a volume switch, okay? There's a volume knob inside my acoustic guitar. If I've got the volume knob turned all the way up and then I've got it plugged into, let's just say I have a boost pedal for some reason, and then I have a guitar amp, and then I have my microphone, and then I have the interface, and then I have Studio One. Any piece of the puzzle, if I manipulate it, if I turn down the volume on my guitar, I have now affected everything else in the chain. If I turn up the volume on the amp and I turn down the volume on the guitar, that is gonna produce a different sound than if I just play everything at 100%, okay? I'm one of those people where if I've got a volume knob on my guitar or my bass, or I've got a volume knob on my amp, I will try to keep everything as consistent as possible. I don't manipulate these things in the middle of a performance. Good rule of thumb, if you're gonna be doing something, adjusting levels, better to adjust the levels later on in the chain rather than earlier on, okay? Like I was saying, if you are recording somebody speaking into the SM7 and they start whispering, go to your Total Mix FX, go to your interface and adjust the gain level there if you can, or whatever's gonna be further along in the process. I'm not using any outboard compressors and stuff other than guitar pedals, but I hope that video has been helpful to you with setting your levels. It's something that I've been playing around with for years now. It feels good that literally over the past few years to have something that I'm consistently aiming for and take all the guesswork out. My name is Chris Green. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you'll hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.